वेलकम टू अनदर वीडियो फ्रॉम दी हार्ट फैक्ट्री सो टूडेज वीडियो विल बी ऑन द टेक्निक ऑफ बायोप्रोस्थेटिक माइट्रल वाल रिप्लेसमेंट विथ रिगार्ड्स टू द प्लेसमेंट ऑफ द स्ट्रक्स द वेरियस टेक्निक ऑफ माइट्रल वाल रिप्लेसमेंट सम नॉलेज अबाउट द रिंजिंग ऑफ द बायोप्रोस्थेटिक वैल द इफेक्ट्स ऑफ एल डी हाइट और फॉर्मल डी हाइट ऑन द कैल्सिफिकेशन ऑफ द वैल एक्सेट्रा there are also various videos i am posting randomly they are all in shorts so less than 1 minute videos so all these videos will be having a full feature video shortly in near future so you can expect some more shorts videos and all these videos will have a detailed video in future so we'll get started with this bioprosthetic valve placement mitral valve replacement technique now so here i'll be showing the technique with regards to the merrill flomero daffodil valve i have no conflict of interest with this valve uh, this is just for knowledge purpose and uh, without wasting much time let's get started with this video so after having excised the valve and having placed everting interrupted plugeted mitral sutures uh, along the mitral annulus i'm trying to empty the right ventricle here by making a small hole in the right atrium less the valve placement uh, would be a bit difficult so this is the obturator provided by the merrill manufacturers i don't have any conflict of interest with this uh, particular product but it but it was quite user friendly it was quite smooth you could bend it multiple times and it could conform to the change you want in the handle so we size the mitral annulus the basic idea of sizing the mitral annulus is is that the obturator should get in gently and should be able to come out gently from the annulus you should be able to see all the plugets outside of the obturator and uh, one should not be pushing the obturator hard into the annulus mind you this is a collapsed state and the sutures which you have placed are on the organizer which is trying to pull the annulus or distort the annulus so following this basics of seeing the plugets after having placed the obturator in the annulus and trying to remove the obturator smoothly will ensure the perfect sizing so screw in the handle into the the slot that is provided within the valve and gently push till it locks onto itself we would be able to see the holder pop out a bit putting the sutures a bit under stress those sutures keep the stress a bit inside preventing suture entanglement whilst implantation and they may also stop your stress from piercing the ventricular wall whilst implanting so once this valve is removed from its aldehyde storage solution we have to rinse the valve now rinsing is done in 2 minute slots there are three bowls of saline taken each bowl has 2 minutes of time the valve has to be agitated gently within each bowl of saline three bowls 2 minutes time for each bowl gentle agit agitation without touching any of the walls of the bowl the logic is to remove the aldehyde residue of the formaldehyde preservative solution because aldehyde attracts calcification and there are various anti calcification processes that the valve is subjected to in modern days to prevent early bioprosthetic valve failure and some of them are to amino oleic acid the sds280 amino propyl hydroxy bisphosphonate aluminum chloride ferrous chloride protamine sulfate etc once the third bowl rinsing is done one has to keep the valve within that particular bowl till the surgeon asks the valve for implantation and based on the number of sutures that the surgeon has placed uh, which we can easily count based on the organizer which we used it depends from unit to unit whether you use a organizer or a hold towel etc there are markings on the valve as you can see here black markings that will tell you the interstrut distance one has to equally place the sutures through the valve sewing ring since there are three struts here you can distribute the number of sutures you have into three slots 
mind you the needle should not be piercing your glove or touching the skin and uh, one should not be using antibiotic solution for keeping the valve wet in by a prosthetic valve We use small instruments like you can see the VSD retractor is used here. These are all small profile instruments. And then you can parachute the valve into the left atrium and then on to the mitral annulus. One should not touch the skin while the valve is being gently pushed into the LA. As told before, all the pledges have to be seen before tying whilst the valve is seated onto the mitral annulus. As you can see here, taking a bit of time to check whether the pledges are seen or not. You can pull the sutures and see. Here the posterior pledges are seen. You have to check for the anterior pledges, lateral and medial pledges as well. And then go on and tie the sutures. The handle will be a bit of a pain, so you can remove the handle. But the quick keys handle that is holding the struts together can be left in place. And the sutures can be tied. You can either do a four point fixation first and then tie all the sutures after that. The four point fixation is that you can fix the valve posteriorly first, anteriorly, laterally and medially and then tie the sutures in each quadrant. Or if the analyst is big enough, you can try and tie the knots as per your practice. So there are various ways of doing this. What you're seeing here is the interrupted mattress plagiated suture technique. One can also do the continuous technique or the simple suture technique based on the type of annulus or the unit practice. Each tying method is simple. You have to see the pleasure before tying. Every time the suture is tied, the suture is gently put under traction, the pleasure is seen and then tied. So one can follow whatever pattern the unit practices, either do the medial side first and then the lateral or the lateral side first and then the medial. So all sutures are gently tied. See the plugets and then tie it. So with the interrupted technique, the incidence of paravalvular leak is uh, quite less. It takes a bit of time as against the continuous technique. And once all the sutures are tied, it's time to divide the sutures. Each suture that is cut has to be confirmed that it is tied first. So that is the job of the surgeon and then this quick release handle is released by cutting the three switches that is holding the struts together. We would not disturb the valve by opening the leaflets. We just pour in some saline just to get rid of any small muck that would be there in the left atrium. This is not valve testing and this is a mitral position and the valve is supposed to be allowing flow from the left atrium into the left ventricle.
the remaining sutures are then cut and the left atrium is prepared for closure. So some other valves like the carpentier valves as you can see in this picture they provide markers on the sewing ring that has to be positioned across the LV OT to avoid left ventricular outflow tract obstruction. The general teaching is such that the struts be placed along 2, 10 and 6 axis so that the LV OT remains along the 10 and 2 axis. So this is what we have done here. It can be confirmed on TE after the heart starts beating or after the cross clamp is released and if you find that the there is LVOTO or LVOT obstruction after biopositive mitral valve replacement the only other option is to either remove the valve and replace it or reposition it in some cases there are reports of uh, alcohol septal ablation to reduce the size of the septum One has to understand that the iotomitral curtain and the septum of the, the left ventricle are in a posterior and anterior relationship with regards to the LVOT and that in a normal patient the mitral valve and the aortic valve would form an angle that is called the iotomitral angle and in patients wherein a small bioprocess is used this angle would be reduced leading to LVOTO. So LVOTO after bioprosthetic mitral valve replacement is seen when you use a small valve or a high profile bioprosthetic valve when the iotomitral angle is distorted or reduced or in patients who have a small left ventricle like those with the critical MS mitral stenosis or those having septal hypertrophy or patients having a sigmoid septum or if you position the bioprosthetic valve in such a way that the strut comes into the LVOTO, uh, you are likely to land up into having LVOTO. And as usual, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. Please like the channel and don't forget to ring the bell as well just to be notified of my next video in time. Uh, if you have anything to say or if you have any comments that was most welcome, you can drop them in the comment section. And also keep watching this space for future videos. As said, there will be a lot of short videos now, followed by a longer version of the same videos. Thanks for watching.